I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the 2022 Lexus LS500 Sports Luxury. The Lexus LS has always been the Japanese brand's premium car because originally it was their only car, except for some Camry Badge DS in America, which everyone has forgotten about. Now we're up to generation five in the LS, and I think it actually looks better than it ever has. Certainly better than since the second generation car, because I feel like the third and the fourth one are a bit kind of meh, but the first two were really good. Now since that first model in 1989, Lexus has sold 870,000 LSs, which is probably not a whole lot when you divide it over 32 years, but it's still quite a lot. And this is the fifth generation here and the midlife update of that car. So this fifth generation LS launched in Australia in April 2018 and this was facelifted in February 21. But we're only now driving the sports luxury version of this car that's had a lot of small but comprehensive changes to the whole car. Now front on, there is a difference in the headlights. They're not only better looking and new, but they also have Lexus's blade scan technology, which is a marketing term for Matrix LED in an Audi or Intellilux in a GM car or whatever. But these ones are really good. You just leave them on auto all the time. They do their own high beam action. No one flashed me when they were on driving around in the last week, which is pretty nice. And these also look a heap better than before. The previous one kind of had this sort of Z shape. And I think the last thing a Lexus LS needs is more on the front end. Whereas this sort of, sort of neatens it, makes it a bit more pointier on the inside and just gives the car a little bit more aggression. And the way that it stacks these little LED headlights through there is also quite cool. It does have Lexus written on the top, which could have said something a bit more exciting than that, but they are effective and nice. We also have headlight washers, which I love. The grille here on the sports luxury version is the same as it was before, but it now has sort of like a metallic dark gray to give it a little bit more lux, apparently is the term. The F-Sport has a different front to this with larger air intakes on the side and is probably my personal choice, but I can see why someone would choose the sports luxury because it is loaded with luxury. Now from side on, the fifth gen LS is clearly the pinnacle in the Lexus lineup because it just is so big. And it also looks much better than the previous car, just with that sort of dynamic kind of swathe, the way that it sort of runs along the side and has a little shape at the back rather than just looking like a double XL GS like the old one did, in my opinion. Let me know what you think. This sports luxury one here not only has these cool 20 inch alloys with this sort of shadow chrome effect, I actually prefer the F Sport ones, but these ones do have a bit of tech in them. They've got hollow spokes in them that's meant to reduce the unsprung mass and also reduce tyre noise along with these new Bridgestone Taranza tyres to make this car as quiet as it can be. I also quite like these two-tone mirrors here, which do look quite Japanese in their little sort of white and black coolness. The black sort of blends in with the glass house, which does make the LS look sort of neat. It is not a neat car overall though, it just is a big car. It really does have a presence, especially in this metallic white called Sonic Quartz. And when I was looking at the specs, this wheelbase is 3,125 millimeters long. So this is a huge car. And I think a lot of that is about just how far forward the front wheels are pushed to give this sort of like a, the engine sort of like a front mid positioning and to give it a stance on the road. Now, other changes around the back here kind of follow the front lights where they're darkening stuff. So these tail lights here have piano black in them to just make them look a little bit more, I suppose, sinister, especially on a white car. Love all the LED patterns and the lights, but the back end I don't think quite has the same presence as the front of this car, but it is really low. When you stand here and look at it, it looks long and lean, and that's something good for a limousine. I don't know whether it has the elegance of a new generation S-Class, but it definitely has its own personality. Where the LS doesn't quite fit the whole limousine mold is in boot space. It's not bad, it's just not huge. Now the buttons over here for the electric boot lid kind of hidden on the edge, fine when you know it's there. In here in the Sports Luxury, we have 440 litres of space. 
if it's not a sports luxury, it has 480 because this one has a rear seat refrigerator. So it takes up 40 litres of room, if my maths are correct, and they are. These C hinges, though, take up more room than I would think would be good. It should have a little kind of stacking arrangement, which I think would be much cleverer, but otherwise the finish in here is beautiful. The three Chasing Cars bags fit pretty easily, and we do have power operation, so labour-saving ease. Speaking of labour-saving ease, welcome to the LS500's interior. Now, this one is having its own white party because we have sonic quartz on the outside and we have moon white on the inside. So hopefully you have someone to clean your car because it looks really good when it's clean. This one over here also has laser cut wood among the finishes and this cool little fillet on the door here, which can be a bunch of other different trims. I think that there's three or four for the Sports Luxury, aluminium in the F Sport, uh, that sort of stuff. But the previous model already had that. This updated LS is mainly about the girth of this 12.3 inch screen in the middle here. Previously it sort of sat back in the dash in this sort of little cliff edged thing here whereas now it is really front and centre and vast in its ability to show you what you need to see which is a lot because there's so much electronic stuff in this cabin and a cute little analogue clock to remind you what the world used to be like. Uh, down here we have a bunch of buttons but one of them is the seat and the steering wheel button so that brings up what I've got here and you do the seat heading, seat cooling, steering wheel you can have it automatic you can also do front, rear seat, concierge, a bunch of other things in the interior that can be controlled from here but you can also have Apple CarPlay and stuff like that but I feel like it's sort of only halfway to being good. Now operating this new massive screen is still a two-way street. It has retained the old little touchpad thing here, which I would suggest more people hate than love. It's gone in the next generation Lexus models in the new NX, for example, so it's kind of a bit of a shame that it's still here. You can do all of the touchscreen stuff here, especially when you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto playing, um, unlike some of the other controls when the car's moving, because Lexus and Toyota have long blocked out, like controlling everything while the car's moving. But it just doesn't quite seamlessly work as well as you want. Now, they've got this little saying called omatenashi, which is meant to be the Japanese art of hospitality. And I get how that works when you own a Lexus and you can be part of the Encore program and have cars in different cities waiting around for you and book cars on holidays and all these advantages. You probably should go to the website for all that stuff, but there is a lot and the LS gets the works. But I don't know whether it's very hospitable having to have cords floating around everywhere and have this thing in the way because when you have your phone plugged in and you want to run it outside of the car, it sits directly on top of the pad, which is kind of okay, but it's incidentally okay. It's not like it was designed to go there. I feel like if all of this bulk was removed and this stubby and slightly odd to use gear lever was moved somewhere up on the dashboard or up into the steering column, there would be such a greater level and feel of airiness in the car. This overall design, while it's beautiful and it has some really interesting details, is sort of starting to drift away from that zeitgeist of being really minimal and really slick. And while this screen does look slick, and while the Mark Levinson stereo, which is 23 speakers, of which they're like here and here and in the roof back there and all around is bloody awesome, especially compared to the old one, then I feel like some of the other things could probably fit in that as well. Even the instruments, having the little screen here and the little ancillary dials here, it's sort of like a nod to a Lexus slash Toyota past, but I feel like the next generation model is going to make this look very dated. Now, beyond that whinging, the rest of it is beautiful. The trim and the leather and all of the stitching in the cabin is just stunning. Like, these seats have 28-way electric adjustment, although quite a lot of it is still in that screen and not necessarily on the side here. You have three-position memory here. You also have a massage function. They are great to sit in over long periods of time, and it does remember what you had on in terms of the seat heating and seat cooling. So for the first three days, I drove this car with a seat heater on one, even though we're almost in summer, and now I have it permanently on fan on two or three because I just really like having wind blown up my back end and it just does that perpetually and I love that. 
As for the HVAC controls, they're just here, simple, easy, which is nice, love that. And this armrest here is not only beautiful to rest your arm on, but just like a Land Cruiser, it goes in both directions. So, and inside, we do have a couple of things. We've got two USB ports here, an old school auxiliary plug, a 12 volt outlet here, which we also have in here, which is unusually cool and a little bit Land Cruiser-esque. And we have a CD player, which means the best sound you could have in the interior. But we probably should go to the back because that's what this sports luxury is really about. If you love gadgets, you're gonna love the back seat of the LS500. There is so much to play with in here. Now, in terms of excess, I should probably start with a ventilation because this car has four zone climate control and the back seat has vents in the B pillar, in the roof and a pair down the center here. So if you're not getting enough ventilation in here, you're doing it wrong. And you might wonder where that is all controlled by and I'll show you where it is hidden behind here. This is not really for sitting. This seat is just like the ottoman at your rich grandparents house that no one's ever sat on because it's so uncomfortable and it is absolute poop to sit on. You want this, which brings this down here in a nice elegant fashion and it has a screen here where you hit home and you have audio, climate, seat adjustment, relaxation, shades and lamps, etc., etc. Both these outside seats have three setting fan cooling and heating, which is great, love the cooling. Um, we can do our own blinds as is happening right here next to me, or back down again, which all happens at a push of a button. The doors are pretty much the same as in the front too with this laser cut wood. Although here you can see the speaker grill for the Mark Levinson stereo, which to me looks a little bit like leopard print. And I think that may be linked to some of the aesthetic of people who might buy this all white party LS500. No criticism, just pointing it out. Um, this bottle here, which does not fit in the front door is even less hope of fitting in the back. It can actually sit here side on, but you wouldn't need to have the lid open because there's kind of really nowhere to put stuff like that. And I suppose if I'm gonna start picking on room, then I would say that I have quite a lot of leg room here, but I don't really have any toe room. I can just wedge my toes under the front seat and I'm sitting behind myself. This seat hasn't moved back for when I get out of the car. It's in that position. And so the cab rearward styling of this car kind of means that everything's moved back um, to kind of the detriment of here being ultra lux. I feel like this is one long wheelbase variant away from really being truly spacious in here, but it's not uncomfortable. It is a really nice place to be. Now in front of me here, the Sports Luxury has 11.4 inch high definition screens each. There's a Blu-ray player down here in the middle, loving this. CD realness in this car. We have these beautiful sort of map pockets that look a little bit like something you'd find in first class on a plane. But then it all comes back to really what's in this control panel here. This middle bit here has two 2.1 amp wireless chargers. It has two headphone jacks with their own volume control. And it has an HDMI port here, which means you can play that through these. But in the sports luxury, we also have another little section in here, which is a chill box. And it's tall enough to put small bottles of champagne, but not a big one. I'd kind of wish it had more, but at least it's got one, right? Like a 1980s Toyota Crown. There I said it. Among the other little surprise and delight things are these little pop down lit mirrors in the ceiling, which reminds me of an old Holden Caprice, but are never as nice as these ones. They're much nicer. Um, we have little pop-up cup holders here behind this lovely little wooden tray. But obviously the party trick in here is these seats. They're pretty much individual buckets and they're just as comfortable as the front. It has all these manual settings, including for this ottoman down here that is on both sides of the car. But on this side, you can actually also, you can't do it on this side because you've got the driver in front of you. But here you can, you can hit automatic and moving the front seat forward and tipping the headrest forward. It's about to make itself into a little bed. Seat down, ottoman out. Whoever was sitting there is now kissing the dashboard and that puts pretty much everything to shame. The official combined fuel consumption figure for the LS500 is 10 litres per 100 kilometres, although we averaged 15.7 litres per 100 kilometres, which 
when it was just in urban stuff was hovering around 23. So if you buy an LS500, it's very much about highway cruising. And if you do a lot of city stuff, you're probably better off to buy the hybrid. The warranty for the Lexus is four years or 100,000 kilometers, which is sort of an odd amount when you consider that Toyota has five years or unlimited kilometers. And Lexus has such a great reputation for reliability that you think it could be seven years or unlimited kilometers and not be a problem. The servicing for the car is every 12 months or 15,000 Ks, but it is only capped for three years, which totals $1,785 across that time for 45,000 Ks. So if you looked at the LS500 for 2021, 22 on paper, you'd go, well, there ain't a whole lot different, but there has been a lot of changes underneath the skin in this car to make it smoother, quieter, better, everything from the seat padding that I'm sitting in to the engine response. Like it still has 310 kilowatts and 600 Newton meters from 1600 to 4,800 RPM. It's a, they say a 3.5 litre, but it's actually 34.45 cc's. So it's a 3.4 litre twin turbo direct injection V6. And it's strong, it is quick. Five seconds, 0 to 100 is the claim. And it does feel like that because it also has a 10 speed automatic that's been modified to make it more sprightly off the line. And when you get first gear and nail it, the LS500 really does move. Other times, perhaps, doesn't feel as strong as it does when it has that initial kick, but it's not a slow car, not by any means. But it's also not a V8 or a hybrid. So the fuel consumption, as we've mentioned, is nowhere near as good as the hybrids. And that's, I suppose, something that you have to live with. But what you do get in return is a lighter vehicle. Now, when I say lighter, lighter compared to the hybrid, not light, because at 2.2 tons, I think 2210 to 2275 is the weight claim. That's a big car, big heavy car. But a lot of work has been done to the suspension. So it just seems to be a lot smoother. It doesn't have that abrasive ride, which is sort of out of kilter of what an LS500 ought to be. Now you can drive it in normal mode, which is all done by this little toggle up here, and it is super cushy. In comfort, it is even cushier, but I prefer normal because it's a bit more level, and it still has sport and sport class to go, and you can turn the C off over here. So in corners, the LS500, especially faster ones, sits beautifully. It is a really nice handling, beautifully balanced car. And in tighter corners, other than the ESC kicking in if you don't have traction control turned off, it's also really good too. It's fun to drive and really pleasant to drive just in any driving environment. But I don't think that it has the bandwidth of what, say, a new generation S-Class has. And that car is so brand new and so high tech that this car is already nearly four years old and it just, at this level of limousine land, the latest is usually the greatest, and the LS isn't quite the greatest, but it does still have a lot of personality, which I like about it. The safety of this car is extreme. Like, it has so many features. Of the ones that I noticed that were a little bit out of the usual were the all-speed adaptive cruise control. It just has front lateral collision assist. I'm not sure how exactly that works. It also has Toyota's sort of lane trace assist, all of that um, steering assist, the stuff that it does on the highway. And I suppose if you drive a car without a brain, then that is certainly helpful. But I don't know about the kind of nudging around and lack of smoothness that it has at times. I don't think that it is anywhere near the best in its class for that level of subtlety uh, you're just best to just kind of either turn it off or try and not have cruise control on because I think it's on all the time when cruise is on but you know on a highway I suppose it's helpful on a long distance but other than that it doesn't need it this car is really relaxed and polished and lovely to drive the seating position in it is really good this aniline or semi aniline leather I think it's called is so nice having the seat ventilation is just so relaxing and it even has little surprise features like when you get in the car or when you turn the engine off, the seatbelt buckle lifts itself out 
and then when you plug it back in and start the car, it pops itself back in again. It's just a little attention to detail like that that makes you sort of happy that you're in a Lexus LS500, but it just doesn't have the bandwidth of the best limousines in its class. And I suppose in terms of a limousine, finally to the ride, the ride quality in this car is significantly improved, but also the quietness of it. Lexus claims they put a decibel meter underneath the driver's seat and it was 26% quieter than it was in the previous model. And I really can't think of any surface that I've driven on in this car where I noticed there was coarse chip tire noise or anything that didn't match its 200 grand price. You might be wondering what the relevance of a Lexus LS is in nearly 2022 when it's only sold 30 cars up to the end of September in 2021 in Australia, but that's double what it had sold in 2020. So it was 15 last year, it's 30 this year, compared to five and a half thousand in total Lexus sales, which will end up around seven and a half thousand, and this will end up around 40 something. The best selling car in its class though is the new generation S class, and it's only sold 175. So 30 is not really that bad. And it does mean that one day, if you can't afford this $201,000 car, that it'll be much more affordable when it's second hand and it'll be something to covet, like all those older LS models are for many of us in our 20s and 30s. Now, in terms of upgrading the LS from what it was before, I think this car actually does it really successfully for the most part. The dynamics are heaps better, it's much more refined, it's still fun to drive, but it's also plush and quiet. And all the things that you expect of a 2.2 tonne, 5.2 metre long limousine like this. I just wish that Toyota slash Lexus could turf all of that multimedia and just start again. Like I know the new NX is coming with a 14 inch screen and all the new generation stuff, but unfortunately that's probably the biggest bone of contention with the LS is that it has that sort of slightly annoying old system that's sort of partially compensated for by having an amazing stereo. But then isn't this sports luxury one about sitting in the back anyway? Those two very opulent back seats, that's where the action's at. And maybe me picking on that is just being a little bit too picky. Let us know what you think below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment on the 2022 Lexus LS500 Sports Luxury or on Chasing Cars. Thanks for watching. <laughs>